One of the most satisfying aspects of 3D printing is the ability to create something out of nothing. To have something go from an idea in your head to an actual physical item that you can hold in your hand, that's pretty amazing. And once you have done it, you start to think differently in terms of what you can do. Instead of thinking, where can I mount this if I use this specific rigging tool, you think, I want to put this here. What do I need to design to make it work? It opens up so many new ways of doing things. You're no longer limited to the things you can buy, which often lends itself to more generic solutions. You often can't purchase an extremely specific item that fits the exact dimensions and requirements that you need. But if you design it yourself, there are no restrictions. You can design it to your exact requirements. For example, I wanted to mount an iPod Touch right here, below my monitor and above my hand when I'm holding my focus unit. There are no parts to purchase that will do exactly that. So I designed it myself. It even fits my quick release. What else have I been able to 3D print? I've printed things like mounting brackets for various camera accessories, cable management clips, a bracket that will allow me to mount this bag straight to my focus station, and much much more. One of the better things is probably a modification to the V-mount plate of my focus monitor that will allow me to mount a Teradek receiver between the monitor and the V-mount battery. And I have also been able to print things for my hobbies, like this fully functioning button plate for a steering wheel. Luckily, I didn't have to design that one myself. Thanks to the community on Thingiverse, I only needed to tweak an already finished design. But I did have to do the electronics, which was a fun learning process. Basically, the limit is your imagination. So have fun! A lot of people assume it's very expensive to purchase and get into 3D printing. But that's not the case anymore. I have a Creality Ender 3 printer, and it's not a fancy printer by any means. But for the occasional print here and there, it gets the job done. When I purchased it back in 2021, it cost me less than $200. Today you can get newer versions with more features and better specs for the same cost. But that $200 upfront cost was something that I calculated would pay for itself rather quickly. For my job as a freelance first AC, also known as a focus puller, I was often purchasing small bits and pieces for camera rigging, cable management and so on. But with a 3D printer I could simply print these parts myself. No need to order them online, pay for shipping and so on. I had actually gotten into 3D printing before I bought my own printer. I created some designs of my own and found some useful parts on sites like Thingiverse. And I would print these through a 3D printing service, where you would upload your 3D files and they would print it and ship it to you. But the cost, once you also factor in shipping, gets rather high compared to printing it yourself, if you do it rather regularly. So once I did the math for parts that I had planned to print in the near future, plus the things I would no longer have to buy but instead could print my own, the printer would cover its own cost rather quickly, so it was a no-brainer to purchase my own. When designing something yourself, you might have to print prototypes and go back to tweak your designs. So having a 3D printer of your own, compared to using a 3D printing service, enables you to easily prototype. For example, if I'm about to print something large that might take 20 hours to print, I don't want to find out afterwards that the dimensions were slightly off and it now isn't compatible with the part I intended, meaning I have to redo the entire print. So instead I would print a part of the model where the dimensions are critical and print that with a prototype profile, using lower infill and slightly higher print speed. It doesn't need to be pretty or durable, it's just for test fitting. If it needs tweaking, you only have to reprint that smaller part. Make sure it's all good, and then you're ready to print your full model with your proper settings for a durable print. But isn't it hard to create 3D models so you have something to print? Well, the thing is, you don't even really have to do that to get started with 3D printing. There are countless 3D models that are free for you to download on sites like Thingiverse or Printables. Do you need a lens cap? Just head over to Thingiverse, download the 3D file and print it. No need to buy one. That's what I did. So you can get by quite well 3D printing without creating any of your own designs. But to really get the full experience, I strongly recommend you learn some basic modeling. And it doesn't have to be complex at all. There's an online program called Tinkercad, which is very beginner friendly. I usually describe it as the Microsoft Paint version of CAD. 
the threshold for entry is very low and it's very easy to get going. Don't believe me? I'll show you. Let's say you need a washer for your quarter inch screw because it's just a tad too long. Let's start with the outer ring of the washer. Well, that's the cylinder. It should be wider than the screw head, so let's make it say 12 millimeters in diameter. Let's say our screw was about 1.5 millimeters too long, so let's make the washer two millimeters thick. Done. Now we just have to create the inner hole. Once again, that would be a cylinder. But to make it a hole, you can either choose a cylinder hole here, or you can create a normal cylinder and then invert it to a hole. This would work with any shape. So you now have a hole, and since the screw will have to go through the hole, it will have to be a bit wider than a quarter inch, which is 6.35 millimeters. So let's make the hole 6.6 .6 millimeters. Now we simply have to place it in the middle of our first cylinder, and then we can group them. When we group them, they become one, a cylinder with a hole in it. And there you have it. If you need to print another one in the future, but now need a 5mm thick one, all you have to do is scale the height of this one up to 5mm. And you're done. So if you want to create something bigger or more complex, all you have to do is break it down into multiple pieces and create it one at a time and then group them together, using the same process as when we made the washer. And if you run into any problems, there are countless tutorials on YouTube to help you out. I'm not gonna deny it, my experience has been far from plug and play. It has required a lot of tweaking with the settings and some hands-on tweaks on the printer itself, things like re-leveling the printing bed, cleaning the nozzle, some upgrades to the printer, and so on. Of course, a newer printer with more features, such as auto bed leveling, will be more plug and play, but you should be prepared for some tinkering. For example, I have tweaked my slicer settings quite a lot to get a profile I am happy with. And perhaps you're currently thinking, what's a slicer? A slicer is the program you use to convert your 3D model to printing instructions for your printer, also known as G-code. The G-code is more or less just telling the printer what all the different stepper motors should be doing at any given time. In your slicer program, you can set the nozzle temperature, bed temperature, print speed, infill level, fan speed, and much, much more. And it's all about finding settings that work with your printer and the filament you are printing. If you change filament from PLA to PETG, for example, you will have to change your settings. And even different brands of the same filament might require slightly different settings. So when tweaking settings, you don't want a print to take forever, but at the same time you don't want it full of artifacts or that it falls apart as soon as you use it. So it's all about finding an optimal balance between print quality and print speed. But I'm not going to get too in-depth in this video. If you want to dig deeper in the rabbit hole that is 3D printing slicer settings, there are lots of good resources here on YouTube. All this to say, 3D printing will require some tinkering, but if you're like me, maybe you don't mind and actually find it quite fun. All in all, I think it's quite safe to say that a 3D printer has been one of, if not the, best purchase I've made as a first AC working in the camera department on various different shoots and sets. The ability to create your own custom-made parts is a great tool to have in your arsenal. It's an asset both for you and production. So if this video has inspired at least one of you to get into 3D printing, I say to you, enjoy it. But that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I'll see you next time.